Hello, patients and friends. Everyone here is joining us. Where we're here with Dr. Shaw and uh, myself, Mike Twombly, health coach. Uh, Dr. Shaw, you know him as your cardiologist and and lifestyle medicine coach um, and, and physician here. So, what we're trying to do today is is kind of dig into Dr. Shaw a little bit. We're we're gonna try and see if we can't get to know the doctor a little bit more. He's got some news to share with you. I'll let him share that with you. And then, um, you know, we'll kind of go from there because the topic today actually is going to be on uh, the, the later years in life and, and what that means to an individual and what leads up to that in terms of our um, activities, our relationships, and what, what phases we go through with regards to our health and, and what that means across time. Um, for those later years in terms of our, our health, longevity, and, and the way we feel about things, because ultimately it's all about experience. So Dr. Shaw, what are you going through uh, right now um, that you'd like to share with everyone? I know it's big news and I know some people already know about it, but I know it's huge. And for you and for everyone affected by you, we, we would love to know what's going on with Dr. Shaw. Well, yeah, thank you, Mike. No, I think, uh... This week has been a very, very exciting week for me. I've been a physician for 41 years. I went to medical school when I was 18 years old. And two years before the medical school, I started this journey of getting into medicine, you know, working hard, working long hours. And finally, this week I realized that my priorities, my goals, my mission has shifted and has changed as I've gotten wiser, as I've gotten older, as I, you know, develop some, uh, you know, some minor health issues. I need to start thinking of the long range goals and plans. And I realized that number one priority for me right now is self-care, my own health, uh, then my family's health, and then my friend's health. And I think uh, to achieve those goals and those priorities, I realized that I have to have more time and resources in my life. And fortunately, by working this uh, many years, resources, I'm okay with it. I think I have enough resources to continue this uh, project, what I'm hoping to do for the next 30, 40, 50 years. A time I did not have. I was working full time, commuting two hours. And uh, lately for the last four months, there's a big construction on the expressway where I take every day. And it, it would take, instead of two hours of commute, it would take sometimes three to four hours of commute. And I've been doing that for the last mm -hmm. three months. So finally, I realized that I cannot just continue this uh, way of working and still be able to achieve the, the next set of priorities I've set for myself. So again, big news. This week, I gave 90-day notice to my employer. I told them that I love working here. And they allow me to. They respect me. They pay me well. You know, they... They made me doctor of the year just four years ago. So I was the best doctor at the hospital just four years ago. And uh, I absolutely love working with them. But I told them that all great things have expired a date. And I think, uh, I think as our priorities change, as our, our missions change, you know, we have to be able to pivot and we have to be able to change ourselves too. So they actually graciously accepted that. Obviously, you know, they offered me to stay longer if I want, but I said that, you know, I will be available if they need me to, but I think I'm going to just uh, continue with my new mission in life. So November 10th is my last day. November 11th, I will be a free man again. And I think uh, I will be like a child, like when I was five, seven, 10 years old. And uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, with the Jayshree's help, with your help, with all the friends and family, I'm hoping to achieve those goals. And I already have put in some, uh, some uh, work, I uh, already have hired a running coach. So for example, today I ran outside seven miles and I think I felt so good because I never felt that running outside, I would enjoy. I always enjoy running on treadmill, but yesterday was the first day I ran about four, four and a half miles and I loved it. I loved it running with a person and talking about different things of life. And I absolutely love just being in the sun, the breeze of cool air. So yesterday was just four and a half miles. And I loved it so much, Mike, that today I ran seven miles. And we were just talking and chatting and about different things in the life. 
And the person who is helping me to run is only 25 years old and his name is Colin. And he actually loves to work with people who are in the 50s and 60s in terms of just uh, having them as a mentor, having them as a friend. And uh, I don't know if people have read this book called Way of a Peaceful Warrior. I don't know, Mike, you have read that book or not. I think uh, even the movie was made with Nick Nolte being the, playing the role of a mentor. It's one of the great book and great, uh, great movie to watch. And that's what I'm hoping to be next 30, 40, 50 years that be a mentor. At the same time, I want to also find my people, not, doesn't matter what age they are. That can be, you know, young, middle-aged, old. I want to find mentors for myself where I will be able to achieve those goals. And you definitely are one of that mentor, Mike. Well, I'm honored. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And, and um, congratulations. I'm sure everyone out there is saying the same thing. Um, go ahead and drop it down below if you want to say congratulations to the doctor, you know, on your own. Um, you're always welcome to do that and, and send him a message. He, he loves to hear those things, I'm sure. Right, doctor? But, um, yes. but that is that is essentially uh, the, the big news that we're hearing. And, and I love to hear that you're, you're taking this step in your life. Um, and also the way you left um, was a key part of, I, I think, of this step, and I'm sure you would agree with me, is is how you leave the place that you end at uh, makes a big difference in terms of how you feel as you walk away and how you feel about walking away. Um, you know, I, I still have years to get to the point where I can actually comfortably say that I can step away from um, and, and retire myself. Um, but But I love being able to see you do this as my friend and as my my physician for all these years, um, to be able to see you, you step away so gracefully um, and, and to make this step that most people have a really hard time with. Either they can't let go or when they let go, it's it's a toxic relationship at that point and they step away with with ill feelings. But it seems like you, you've you had the opportunity to be able to step away from this with, with a, a, a light heart, both on your end and on the end of the hospital that you are working with or the partners you are working with. And everyone is happy to see you enjoy your life and take this step into your life. Um, you know, that, that's a huge, huge part of this, this process for you to be able to enjoy having this, this uh, phase in your life. So with that being said, it, what's next for Dr. Shaw? Is he going to go to the golf course? Is he going to sit on a, a boat and do some fishing or I'm guessing it's probably neither of those. So tell us what Dr. Shaw wants to do uh, stepping into say his, his first days and then potentially after that, what you, you, what you have in mind. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a million dollar question because uh, <laughs> uh, first thing I want to do is I want to, I want to really improve my health. I'm very healthy, fortunately. Mm -hmm. I have earned my health over the last five years by eating healthy, by exercising, by sleeping, but I want to be even healthier. I want to be a role model for our page, for our followers, for our friends and family. I want people to say that if Dr. Shah can do it, we can do it too. I want to read more. I want to run a few marathons. I want to lose my belly fat, which is the worst fat one can ever have, the visceral fat. I want to, I want to never get diabetes. I, never, I want to never get heart disease. My family has a very strong uh, family history of heart disease. Uh, my dad has an early Alzheimer's, so I never want to get Alzheimer's disease. So I definitely want to be healthy first myself. But at the same time, I don't want to be, I don't want to be selfish for what society and what family and friends have done for me. I want to give back to the society, give back to the family and friends what I received over the last 58 years of my life. And fortunately now with this retirement, I will have 24 seven time available. So I'm going to carve out about six or eight or 10 hours for myself and eight hours of sleep. And then I will have six hours to give back to my family, to my spouse, to my friends, to my community, to our followers, to our you know, viewers, that I'm gonna definitely give back. So I have a lot of plans in my head. I've been writing constantly on my phone what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna restart 
our Facebook Live with different guests. I did that last year. We had almost 100 guests last year. So I'm going to restart that program. And I'm hoping to have one guest every night. There will be some recurring guests like yourself. Uh, there's another mm -hmm. person named Steve Monahan. He's a retired uh, Fortune 500 executive, extremely smart mm -hmm. male, very well resourced man. He has his own TED Talk uh, organization in Atlanta. Uh, he believes in stoicism, very well read, very wise man, just like a mentor. So he will be a recurring person on our Facebook Live. I would also want to have some other recurring physicians. I also want to have varied interests, uh, not just health related, but about finances, about relationship, about marriage, about, uh, about uh, running, about triathlons. I want to have uh, all various type of guests who are going to talk about life in general, not just about how to prevent diabetes and how to lose weight. We're going to be talking, Mike, and with your help, with your partnership, we're going to be talking about how to be successful at life as a father, as a mom, as a wife, as a husband, as a friend, as a son, you know, as a physician, as a, any career. We're going to be bringing all variety of guests. And I'm hoping to make our Facebook page a go-to place for people when they want to be when they want to be successful at their life. So I'm excited. I'm already laying out some plans. And you and I have a lot of work to do together. And I think uh, I pretty much have committed myself to this cause. And now with the time on hand, I am hoping that I'll be able to uh, provide the same uh, service and same uh, uh, kind of uh, dedication what other people have done for me. Well, um, that, it sounds like your plate is full. Doesn't sound like retirement to most people, but I, I think that knowing you and knowing uh, you know how your mind works and, and how your heart outreaches to the public, I, I don't think you could have it any other way. Um, you know, with that being said, you know, you, you say that you know your your years of of this has been thirty six years, and you've been really working probably fifty to fifty five to ninety hours. I know that it went to seventy, and then it even went beyond that many times, um, upwards of ninety hours a week um, during those times. I, I know that that can be a stressful situation and, and a tough thing to go through. Um, as any professional, and I, I think that as a physician, all the physicians out there can relate, professionals out there, many can relate. Um, and, and that's something that I know that for a while, it was, it was something that really weighed heavily on you. Um, what was the, the process that you went through to be able to get through those times? Because I think a lot of professionals would benefit from someone who's already been through the grind, already had that opportunity to kind of face the fire, go through it, deal with the stress and the strain, deal with the family, having time where you couldn't spend as much with the family as you wanted. You've had two kids, you've had every experience there is under the sun with your, your mother and father coming and living and staying with you. And like you said, dealing with Alzheimer's and a lot of things as well. The, the stresses and strains on life, I know you've had Jay Shree in a wonderful marriage, um, but how did you handle the stress of, of going through all of that and handling 55 to 90 hours at times uh, a week and not go crazy. I mean, I know that you've had some dark times, but it, it's definitely something that would really take most people completely out. How did you pull through? What, what was your, your process of getting out of that? Yeah, I think, uh, again, every person even the slightest amount of stress, how they handle it is very commendable. And uh, being a physician, fortunately, we go through proper training. So we are trained to handle stress. I remember the first death I experienced and witnessed from a patient when I was in medical school. I actually cried at home because I never thought that I will see a death. Even though I've seen death as a young child, but seeing a death as a, as a medical student who are providing the care or a physician who are providing the care is just something difficult to digest because you feel like you failed because you feel like a person died because you did not do a right thing. At the same time, we all are realizing that there are certain illnesses and there are certain circumstances where that is inevitable. But that kind of wisdom only comes as you mature, as you go through further training, 
So the stressful situations one has to go through and go through and go through to actually learn how to cope with the stress. So I think fortunately, I always had a habit, Mike, of self-reflecting. I always liked solitude. I was a person who can sit alone for hours and hours and just think what I'm going through. So I always had ability to reflect well on my life, on my situation. So every time I went through any kind of stressful situation, every night before I went to sleep, before I go to sleep, I always reflect on it. What could I have done differently? And that helped me a lot. Also having a support, like you said, support from Jay Shri, even support from parents, support from even kids, support from friends is very important. And that's where we talk about this six pillar of relationship. You know, relationships are so important to diffuse the stress in life. Stress is inevitable. Stress is gonna happen in everybody's life, but we have to have tools to overcome those stressful situations and still stay healthy. You know, there are various ways. I think people get stressed about, you know, a relationship and marriage. People get financial stress. People get health related stress. People get stressed getting stuck in the traffic. So there are various types of stress, but fortunately the tools to overcome the stress, there are some common tools. For example, people who exercise regularly and jog or walk or run regularly, even the hardest type of stress, they're able to overcome that easily. People who sleep seven to eight hours and not watch Netflix until two o'clock, those people are able to overcome stress. People who have habits of meditation, people who have habits of self-reflection, people who have good support system. And support system requires my give and take. If I want to receive a support from my wife, Jayshree, I have to give support to her and I have to give something in return. Because even though unconditional love, like we talked last time, unconditional love are possible, but in most relationships, it becomes give and take. Otherwise, if you just take, 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 after a few weeks, few months, few years, the relationship dries out. And that's where I think give and take becomes very important. So for me, stress was always there, still there, it will be there, but I have learned how to diffuse my stress, how to still stay healthy. At the same time, I must admit that 10 years ago, and prior to that for about two or three years, I did not take care of myself. And I paid a very, very heavy price. And I don't want any of our viewers, followers, family or friends to go through what I went through 10 years ago. I went through a, a, an episode of a major depression. And that's something uh, I don't wish anybody, but that's until you go through, you never know how miserable that feeling is. Sometimes I would not take shower for two or three days. I would just stay in the bedroom. I had no interest in life. I had no interest in food, no interest in exercise, no interest in talking to anybody. And that situation was, in my opinion, you know, was partly because I did not take care of myself. And I learned that it will never happen to me. And now I take care of myself. The reason I explained that story about myself is because many people probably are going through what I went through 10 years ago. Only thing they can do is prevent deteriorating the mental wellness and the mental well-being. And they can do that easily. I have a separate YouTube talk on how to prevent depression and how to prevent the relapse of depression. That's a two or three hour long talk on depression. I highly recommend. I took hours and hours of reading and hours and hours of watching and uh, watching videos and also talking to many psychologists and psychiatrists. And I've created that YouTube video which if any person is going through depression, it's a must watch video. There are about 40 or 50 yeah. techniques which they can employ to essentially prevent the depression if they are feeling down or if they have ever had depression one in time in their life, if they want to prevent the relapse in the future, they can easily do that. So please have everybody watch that video. So again, to answer your question, stress is inevitable, learn how to diffuse and how to overcome the stress. That is, is very tough to do, I understand. And, and I know, especially from the, the standpoint of someone who's providing health, most providing health, you know, health providers are, are very, very um, 
seldomly sharing such things. It's something that they, they run from and they almost feel like they have to act like it's not happening. And, and all of us have, have dealt with, and I'm sure all of you out there, you know, have seen this and, and maybe even do it right now, go to a physician that has, you know, problems with, with their weight or with their eating habits and those things. And it, it shows in their, their, you know, physique and, and yet they're telling you to not eat a certain way. But if they just shared their experience, like you have here, doctor, and were saying, you know, I actually, I deal with this too. I understand, you know, if I, if people were actually able to share and still be educated and, and knowledgeable about how to fix it, it would be helpful and go a long way. So, so we appreciate you sharing your experience, doctor. Um, you know, that that's a brave, you know, thing for an individual to do any individual, but one in your position many times doesn't tend to do that, doesn't tend to reveal about themselves any chink in their armor that could possibly, you know, make people, you know, think less of them or not, not listen to what they say as a result. But in, in all reality, we're, we're listening to you more as a result of, of you sharing that. So, so thank you. And, and I, as your friend, I, I was a, a part of your life and I, I have seen you go through these things and have you seen, seen you come out of them. And it's an amazing thing that, you know, you, you've become such a strong individual now um, on the other side of, of feeling the way that you felt years ago um, and what you went through as a result. So, so your, your wisdom and knowledge are, are very appreciated, especially in that area. Um, I, I'm a big component of, of luck in our lives and, and free will being something that is, is really kind of, it's not deterministic entirely, but it is certainly something that we don't have a, a grip on free will like we think we do or like we would like to imagine we do. You know, thoughts kind of pop into our head and inspirations pop into our head and we're motivated sometimes, other times we're not. And there's no way to measure that or to find out where it comes from or any of those things, it all seems to be kind of this matter of luck, this spark that occurs sometimes, doesn't it others? So can you tell us how, how you um, are inspired? Like what inspired you when you were 20 and then what inspires you now and what you see is the difference and, and really um, you know, how, that, how that has changed for you over all these years of going from being you know, that 20 year old that decided on cardiology to being the one now that is, gone through this cardiology field, experienced and, and helped so many people. And now, how do you become inspired today and, and what inspires you? Yeah, I think, uh, I think inspiration is, in my opinion, is always available when you are ready, when your mind is open, when you're willing to listen to people. You know, parents could be the biggest inspiration. My dad and my mom, they are one of the hardest working people. You know, I think I cannot thank them enough for what they have done for me. So big inspiration came from me, from my parents. Uh, my dad is an engineer. He worked long hours. He was always happy, always smiling, always very people person. So I learned from that. My mom always uh, uh, very organized, very balanced, uh, very uh, caring, very loving. At the same time, very strong will person and very uh, strict person. So I think I got some of those qualities from her. I, I got inspired from my brother, my sister. And once I got married, obviously, that was a constant source of inspiration from my wife, Jay Shri. So I think, uh, I think I was fortunate. But at the same time, like I said, every person can have those resources. Every person obviously has parents. Every person has a you know, possibility of spouse or a life partner. Every person has a brother, sister, or a friend. So I think you can get inspired. You can find a coach. I think, in my opinion, you have to you have to be ready and willing to listen and implement when you hear the right advice and when you hear the right coaching tips. I think if you are not able to take those advice and coaching tips, you will never be able to grow. And many times, those kind of tips and advice they come infrequently and at times in a random manner. So you have to be mentally constantly vigilant that when the right type of advice come, you have to be ready to, to digest it, to implement it, to accept it, and, and go with a blind faith that that advice will walk me through the life. And I think I've done that. You know, I'm a person, I think you are that type of person too, Mike, that we sometimes take people's uh, uh, tips and advice 
uh, almost like a blind faith. I mean, obviously we think it through, we, we self-reflect, we make sure that's the right thing for us to do. But at the same time, we are believers. And I think believers people go actually further ahead in life. People who are deniers, people who are more of an argumentative people versus people who are followers, people who are believers. Because every leader, in my opinion, once was a follower. I think leadership skills do not come until you are a good follower. Every leader is a good follower. And I think uh, I want to be that kind of person. I've always been that kind of person, but I want to be more of a, that person. So I think uh, my inspiration, even my inspiration came from a lot of my patients. I think when a patient came and told me that they feel better after I prescribe a medicine or after I asked them to eat healthier or I asked them to exercise, I felt inspired when a patient he was just giving me a hug. A patient, I think I was always one of the few physicians who was never afraid to hug a patient. You know, I think in America, sometimes uh, people said that your lawyer will tell you never hug a patient because that's giving out too much emotions and too much getting close to the patient. But I was never afraid to hug a patient. I always sat and talked to the patient. I never stood and talked to the patient. I always found a chair and sat with the patient. Even in the in a in a hospital room, many times I would sit at the edge of the table, at the edge of the bed, and talk to the patient. So patient would be you know sitting slightly upright, but I would be sitting at the leg on the bed of the hospital and talking to them. And I think I always feel like creating that that feeling that you are never rushed. You are always always you have a hours and hours available for a patient. And I think I enjoyed that kind of thing. So I think inspiration comes from variety of uh, variety of people. Inspiration comes from some of your own uh, uh, actions and feedback. And again, there are a lot of books written on inspiration. You also have to be self-inspired too. I think, like I said, I like my solitude, and many times I reflect on it. And when we reflect on our life, when we reflect on our circumstances, when we reflect on our life situations. We sometimes get a self-inspiration too. Reading many inspiring books is very important. I have, you know, at least 100 books on inspiration. I probably have 2,000 books total in my house, but I have lots of books on inspiration. And I think we have, to, we have to make sure that we are almost like a non-stop vital, a non-stop uh, 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 lively, a non-stop inspired because there are so many things to contribute to this world for every individual. We are so much capable human being, every person. Every person don't realize that there are trillions of reactions our body is doing it every second. So that means our body is a wonderful, wonderful machine. Our body is more uh, complex and more wonderful than even going a rocket to the Mars. We are much more, not much more, we are like, trillion times much more complex. And that's every human being. So every human being has an ability to deal with a complex thing and contribute to the world, contribute to the society, because they are doing it within their own body every second, those complex things. It's just that people sometimes are not given proper opportunity, people proper chance. Sometimes they are not given proper coaching. Sometimes they are not inspired because there's never been a better uh, coach for them. And that's what I think you and I are going to do it for next many, many decades, that our page hopefully will be a team-like page where we will be inspired ourselves, you and I, and hopefully we will lead to inspiration for thousands and millions of people over next many decades. That's what my hope is. So I know it was a long-winded answer, but that's this is the right feel about inspiration. Well, that's that's huge, Doctor, and that that's exactly what I was I was expecting, um, you know, from you know someone so inspirational as yourself to to be you know coming back with, but but to to say um, you know what you said and, and to kind of go back to that and say okay, what about uh, the individuals that don't have um, that? It's it's that nature versus nurture. Some grow up without you know family in their homes. You know, it's something where they have a single mother, the mother's gone at work, the father's never been around, and, and they don't even have a library in their neighborhood. Um, 
you know, those types of situations, you know, those, those are the ones that really upset and bother me when I'm, I'm thinking about what can actually be done uh, to, to change the world in, in the areas that are not quite as good. Um, you know, I, I've, I've lived, you, you've actually lived over by Detroit as well. So, um, you know, stayed in, in areas over there that, that were worse than, you know, worse than what most people think are even habitable uh, situations. And then I've been down in Tennessee where you're, it's just a trailer sitting out on a piece of property that is, you know, pretty much abandoned property. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter what gender. I mean, we, we all have within our populations, people who just don't have access to these things. So, um, you know, with that sort of a thing, um, I, I love that, that you're looking to be the inspiration and potential um, resource for people to reach because with more and more internet op opportunities and things flowing into people's homes and onto their, their smart devices, um, you know, I, I'd love to be able to reach those people that at one time just, you know, didn't have that voice, didn't have that opportunity to hear the right thing. Um, but, but for that being the case, um, how, how can other people um, offer themselves um, as as ways to be that that help and inspiration if they see someone you know because you you've been that inspiration for so many uh, what would you say to an individual that wants to help out other people what what should they look for in you know their community and and how should they help you know to reach out themselves yeah I think uh, I think I always feel that people living with some disadvantage in life including not having uh, parents or set of parents, not having enough financial resources, not even even having sometimes food on the table, not having library in their neighborhood, not be able to go to school. Many countries, you know, kids don't go to school. They go to work when they are 10 years old. So I think uh, I feel really unfortunate for them. But at the same time, I think, uh, I think if you find a mentor, whether it's a parent or a friend or a brother or a sister, if you are willing to work hard, if you are willing to learn uh, new things every day and with the technology available, for example, India, almost everybody has a smartphone. And once you have a smartphone, I think it becomes your responsibility that you watch some learning videos or you watch some bogus movies or some TikTok or some you know, bogus things on the phone. So I think it becomes your own personal responsibility to take the advantage of resources. I see many kids, for example, even in Detroit downtown, Detroit neighborhood, where people have thousand dollar resources. You know, they may have iPhone, which is eight nine hundred dollars. They may have a you know two hundred dollar Nike shoes, but they themselves are not guided. And I don't think it's their fault. I think uh, if they were given proper guidance from the same iPhone, they will be watching many learning videos. You know, there are so many. There are like Khan's Academy is a prime example. Khan's Academy is a type of uh, YouTube videos where you can learn from age three until almost college, everything on YouTube at no cost. Khan's Academy is a nonprofit organization where all these videos are made and available at no cost to the people and anybody in the world can watch it. So I think I agree with you. I think even though your circumstances may not be ideal, but you can always, always make best out of it. And I think there's always going to be a situation where we always want more of the resources available to us. And that applies to a person who is making 20,000 a year, a person who's making 10 million a year. We always will be looking for more resources. That's how our human mind works. But that's where I think we need to realize that from the same resources, how can we make a better life for ourselves? For example, giving up cardiology practice at age 58 is giving up lots of, lots of money, lots of money. But the things I'm going to gain has almost like invaluable. They are in diamonds and gold and silver. I'm going to gain so much from my life in next 30, 40, 50 years that not any amount of money will ever be able to do that. And I've gone through that, so I know at a first hand. So my 
answer to your question, my answer to the people who say that they don't have enough resources, learn to deal with the same resources you have and make the best out of it. Instead of watching you know, TikTok on your phone or Netflix on your phone or watching some dancing cats on your YouTube video, learn about life, learn about motivation, learn math, learn English, you know, learn science. You can do all those things. Go for a walk, have a mentor, you know, enroll into online classes. You now, fortunately in America, there are so much resources. We just need to get the resources. And education, yes. always in my opinion, is a number one. After health, health is number one, education is number two. I, I almost put them at an equal level. Education is so important that I want all our viewers and followers to make sure that they make commitment for themselves and for their family and then for their kids to make them the most educated they can. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And what was that, um, just to, to reiterate, uh, what was that, that Khan's Academy you said? What was that? Khan's Academy, yep. How do, how do you spell that? It's K H A N. Hands Academy. Okay, and that's that's on. Is you said that's online? It's online. It's on YouTube. It's on, on YouTube. YouTube. Okay, okay. Well, I just I want our, our listeners to have that because that again is is a resource and it is something that I didn't know about myself. I've watched TED talks. I've I've done a lot of you know educational things with with the internet that I have. But I, I even with all that I've pursued, I've never even heard of Khan's Academy. So that's a wonderful resource. And if it is exactly as you say, it, it does give a resource to anyone who wants to be educated. And really, uh, you know, like you said, um, education. Yeah, Khan's, a, Khan's Academy oh. had an option of start charging people small fee and they would have made millions and millions of dollars, but they end up saying, keeping it free. And Bill wow. Gates actually wow. end up, Bill and Melinda Gates actually end up jumping in and they funded the Khan's Academy some millions of dollars. And many of the, many of the billionaires are doing that because wow. they realize wow. that Khan's Academy is actually more than for Americans. It's actually it's for the amazing. person in Afghanistan or Pakistan or Syria who don't have even schools to go to because they are war torn countries. And many times schools are closed for months and years. And sure, kids can sure. learn at home everything they can learn in school just from Khan's Academy. Sure. sure. And this year for us, the COVID has been a year out of school as well. It would have been nice for people to have known that, uh, to, to continue to have their kids learning and staying on pace with what they should know at whatever age they're at. But it seems that we've lost a year and, and all of our kids are one year behind where they should be, those that have, were a part of the school system in the past year. So. Um, those resources, great, great share, Doctor. I, I love that. I'm going to have to look that up when we get done uh, myself and, and take a look at that because that, that's a, a great thing. And I'm sure I'll, I'll learn a ton myself as well. Uh, always looking forward to, to learning more. And if, if it's there, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump onto that. So, um, you know, with, with that being said, um, you, you have a, a wonderful Sunday afternoon ahead of you. You have a, uh, a weekend um uh, ceremony coming up. You're going to be going to a wedding next weekend. Um, you are still going to work through the week and that sort of a thing. So it's it's something that you have another 90 days before that's going to be uh, anything changing for you. But um, as you're preparing for this, coming into this, um, what what would you say to the 20 year old self? Uh, you know that that you know started off years ago. If you could say something with the wisdom that you have today. What would you do as a 20 year old and, and how would you, you step into this world uh, today? I think uh, I would say that uh, about 12 years ago, I came out with this catchy, uh, catchy phrase where I said, live 888 life. I think I know I told you know, that Michael not when you, when you were with me in 2008, but I know I told our nephew, Samir, uh, who is in Toledo, Ohio, I told him live 888 eight, life. That means eight hours of work, mm -hmm. eight hours of sleep, and then eight hours for yourself. Okay. And that eight hours of yourself includes self-care, including some exercise, healthy eating, cooking, some social time, giving some time to your spouse, giving time to your kids. You know, obviously it includes some personal care, including showering and everything else. But sure, sure. live 888 life. When you start disturbing that schedule, you start to become imbalanced. 
and work-life balance becomes very important. When you work instead of eight hours, when you work 12 hours and take hour or two from the sleep or hour or two from self-care and social and other time, then your life starts to suffer. So you have to be very balanced. So a 20 year old, I wish I was told this thing. I would tell the 20 year old today that live a very balanced life. Try not to work more than eight hours unless absolutely necessary. Cut your expenses so you can live within the means of what you make in eight hours. So the other 16 hours include eight hours of sleep and eight hours of self-care and other important aspects of life. So to conclude today's segment, I said live a 888 life. I love that, Dr. That's, that's a wonderful way to end it. I think that's a great way to end it there. And there's people that I work with, if you're watching and if you've been watching through this and you're gonna come back to watching the whole thing, please listen to that because that is something that I come across all the time where people are staying up all night working and working into those, those midnight hours. And your, your words there are golden. That is, that is a beautiful way to, to end this segment. So um, we'll, we'll end there, doctor. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us for Health, Li or Health Talk Live this week. Uh, as I said, Dr. Shaw will be at a wedding next week. Um, so we will, we will hold off on next weekend, correct, doctor? Yes, yes. And, and then we will resume the following week. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to serving you again and we'll continue to serve you throughout on the page as well as uh, off the page with some recorded videos, videos that we're going to be continuing to put up. So stay tuned, stay connected, and uh, we'll see you once again, Health Talk Live in two weeks. Talk to you soon. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Mike. Thank you, doctor.